He said, Teddy, I'm glad you called me. I really am. He said, now you got my personal cell phone number in case you have any other issues. I want you to directly talk to me because I don't want this to happen again. What's up, YouTube? Welcome back to Breaking Truckers. I want your blood. I want your soul. And I want them both right now. Wow, 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 wow. This, uh, I, I don't know where this, uh, female truck driver drives for sounds as though she drives for a mega carrier but they trying to blame her for an accident on a truck that she didn't even drive in these couple of clips right here female truck driver and tiktoker gets a letter in the mail talking about she has a preventable on her record no more wasting time let's get it Hold on. So good Monday morning, TikTok. Or is it a good Monday morning? Because I'm about to flip the truck out. Matter of fact, I've already flipped out because we don't play when it comes to my driving record. You want to know what this piece of paper is? This piece of paper came in the mail during the week and I had just gotten it over the weekend because I go home on weekends. This letter is from my safety department stating that Teddy was involved in a preventable accident on March 13th. No way in hell is that even possible. I'm about to tell you why. On March 13th, I was driving a rental car to Michigan to recover a truck for my company recover it and supposedly head to Minnesota to get my other truck. Now when I got to Michigan, I realized that truck was a piece of shit and I wasn't driving that truck nowhere. Nowhere! Now it had all kinds of damage done to it. Specifically the brakes were locked up on it and somebody had drug it there because there was a bald flat flat spot on the bottom of the right rear drive tire. That night, I notified my company and told them the issues, and they said, we'll get with dispatch and breakdown in the morning. So that is what I did. Now, breakdown walked me through a process of using my differential lock and the brakes unlocked. And then they asked me to drive it to the dealership four miles down the road. I said, maybe you should have it towed. They said, well, do you think you can make it four miles to the dealership? I said, if you tell me to do it, I'll do my best. So to the dealership I went. After notifying them of all the damages that was done to the truck. The very next day I get a phone call from a lady named Ashley in the office. Evidently the accident lady. Asking me about the damages to the truck. And right from the get go I didn't like her attitude. And at one point in time during the conversation I had said, Ashley, seems like you're trying to blame me for the damages that were already done to this truck. She said, oh no, I'm not doing that. She said, I just need to know the damages so we can get them fixed. I said, well, the truck's at the dealership already. So you drove the truck to the dealership with the brakes locked? No, Ashley, they were unlocked, directed by breakdown. Then I drove it to the dealership. So I thought all was good. Until I get a letter in the mail saying I was involved in an accident in a truck that I never even drove, which the damage was already done. The safety lady, Judy, keeps telling me to calm down. Let's talk about it. Well, let's talk about it, Judy. You don't call a driver before you start putting shit on their record. You don't review the camera, Judy. Judy said, we'll put it down as a non-preventable. Who's your boss, Judy? Because I want to call him. I want to talk to him. All right, that was the first clip, and that was crazy, man. How are you going to be responsible for damages to the truck that you didn't even put on there? This young lady recovers trucks for this company. And you would think that when you are you you're in recovery to recover trucks, there's going to be some amount of damages to the truck. Now, I don't understand just because she reported damages on the truck. How is that her responsibility? I mean, the company going to come back and say, well, because you reported damages to the truck. We, we making it your responsibility, so we're going to put it as a non-preventable. No, you're not. Not on my watch, you're not. You, you better put that on the person who, who left this truck. <laughs> well, in another clip, 
of course, she comes back because now she has to call people after people after people to get it rectified. So here's a little update part two, if you will, to the accident that never happened. Little backstory in case you missed part one. I went to recover a truck from my company. The truck had damages done to it. Now I am being blamed for the damages already done. Yes, I took pictures, video, turned it into my company. Go watch the video if you want to know the rest. Now I've contacted safety about the letter I got in the mail stating I was in a preventable accident. Me and the safety lady got nowhere. She told me, well, I'm just going on the information that was given to me. I said I did not do it. It was already done. Well, we'll just make it a non-preventable. I said, I don't want that on my record. I don't want my name and accident in the same sentence if I did not do it. Well, non-preventable doesn't hurt you any. I thought all accidents went on your record. Maybe I'm wrong. But even if it doesn't, that keeps my company from giving me my yearly raise because now I have a preventable or non-preventable accident on my company record. Therefore, no raise for Teddy. And if it's not that big of a deal anyways, then don't pin it on anybody and just get the tire fixed. So me and the safety lady got nowhere. She wants to keep it as a non-preventable. I therefore call the safety lady's boss. He seems caring, concerned, told me he will call me back as soon as he digs around, gets to the bottom of it, and figures out what's going on. This was on Monday afternoon. Now it's Wednesday and I've yet to hear from him. So therefore, I made a call to the human resources department. I don't even know if they've got anything to do with it, but I'm calling somebody to try to track him down. Come to find out, he's a busy man. He's at the Columbus Terminal doing orientation. So today being the last day of orientation, I'm hoping he'll get back with me today. I also let her know how the safety department was talking to me and treating me over the phone with about this much respect. I always like to give respect and I expect respect in return. So, you know, I appreciate everybody's support and especially to the ones that say, well, that's what you get for working with the mega carrier. Let me just say this about my company. When I started here nine years ago, they had about four or 500 trucks. The last three or four years, they've doubled in size, so now they're 800 to 1,000 trucks. So yeah, I reckon I'm a mega carrier. But this is not how they treat their drivers. This is so out of realm for them. This is typically not how things go. I mean, I don't care how big they are, but they give me miles, they give me home on weekends. I've got an A1 dispatcher. So what do you do? What do you do? I work for him. So hopefully it all works out for the better. But if it don't. <laughs> Non-preventable don't hurt you. Bro, I, I don't want that on my record, period. Whether it's a preventable or non-preventable, especially if it's something that I did not do. I don't understand. Why, why is it so hard? For when you talk to people in the office to let them know that you drove the truck, you dropped off the truck, you documented the truck, and everything that you documented was on the truck before you got in and actually drove the truck. Why is it they not understanding that those damages hasn't been done by her? I don't get it. So let me let me see if I can understand this. Let me see if my five year old brain can understand this. So if I drive for a mega carrier, which I won't drive for a mega carrier no more, that's out. But I'm just saying, if I just happen to go back to a mega carrier, well, you know what? I, I don't think I will ever go back to a mega carrier. But anyway, anyway, you mean to tell me that if I go and recover a truck for you? I recorded the damages to the truck. I send that information in. You mean to tell me that's going to be a non-preventable on my record? Explain that to me because I'm I'm just not understanding the, the concept here. All right, explain this to me like I'm a two-year-old, okay? Because there's an element to this thing. I just cannot get through my thick head. How is that going to be a preventable on my record? I did not get into an accident. I didn't crash, scratch, damage, or anything. I drove the truck from point A to point B to get it back to where you guys needed for me to get it to. I sent in the information 
per what I need to do when I when I pre trip a truck. So all that stuff is not on me. But yet you gonna you gonna stand fast and tell me, well, we're gonna have to put it on somebody. Well, put it on the person that abandoned the truck. How about that? All right, guys. So in this final clip, she finally got some justice. And here it is, part three, to the accident that never happened. And Lucy Lockett, you would think that's exactly how this company would feel. You would think. So I get a phone call from the safety lady's boss, Kevin. Kevin seems real nice, caring, and concerned. However, Kevin starts off by saying he's fairly new to the company after talking to the safety lady. Supposedly, it's been company policy forever ago that when a driver reports any damages to a truck, it's always listed as a non-preventable. What kind of shit is that, Kevin? Non-preventable that no way affects you, takes your raise, affects your DAC, goes on your record. No way at all. It's just a non-preventable. Kevin, you seem like a real nice guy. I want to believe you, but I can't. I just can't believe you. Well, Teddy, why don't you tell me again exactly what happened and tell me all the damages that was done to the truck. So I went through the big list of damages that was already done to that truck, specifically the bald flat spot on the tire that I'm being blamed for. He said, and that is exactly what you told safety. Kevin, that's exactly what I told the ladies over the phone that, by the way, were being disrespectful and rude to me. That's exactly what I told them. Kevin said, well, I don't know how safety came to that conclusion. There's no way they should have came to that conclusion based on what you told me. We don't want you to go anywhere, Teddy. You're a nine-year veteran driver at this company. You're good for this company. You're a good driver, low risk. We never have any issues. We don't want you to go. We want you to stay right here with us. Well, Kevin, I don't want to go anywhere. I didn't even want to have to call you, Kevin. I wish safety would have took care of it. Well, Teddy, I'm going to give you a letter via email and one sent to your house. I'm going to put it in writing that on March 13th, all you did was report damages that were already done to the truck that you were supposed to recover that you actually never recovered. And no non-preventable, no preventable, no nothing like that is going to go against you. Teddy, will you take that letter in writing? Kevin, did you read my mind? Because that's what I'm asking for. And Teddy, as I'm writing your letter and sending it to you in the mail, I'm going to have a talk with safety and I'm going to have safety apologize to you for coming to that assumption and talking to you like they did on the phone. Well, now, I mean, if I get an apology, I get an apology. But even if I don't, Kevin, just send me that letter because that's what I want. He said, Teddy, I'm glad you called me. I really am. He said, now you got my personal cell phone number in case you have any other issues. I want you to directly talk to me because I don't want this to happen again. And I know you don't hear this enough, but you drivers, I appreciate everything you drivers do. You're out here sacrificing time away from your family just so I can provide for my family. Just so I can put food on the table for my family. I appreciate everything that every driver does out there. Kevin's laying it on thick, but I'm eating it up. I'm eating it up. I'll let you know when I get the letter. Man, shout out to Kevin. Kevin, the safety lady's boss. You mean to tell me this driver had to go over your head, over your head, over your head to get to the bit boss? And he didn't even know the situation that was going on. So obviously there must be lack of communication in the office. And you want to know what I think that is? Simply because the young lady that she had the initial issue with, she didn't want to be called out. That's why. That's why she neglected to let Kevin know about what was going on between her and the driver. Now, this is the disrespect, the disconnect, the the BS, the total BS that be going on with mega carriers. Now, I'm not going to just put it on mega carriers. I'm just going to put it on all carriers, because if you have an issue and it goes all the way down to your to your dispatcher, if you have an issue with your dispatcher and you just can't, you know, see eye to eye and you have to go over that person's head then you might have to do that. But some companies are like good old boys. So they're going to take what their dispatcher 
say as as fact. I don't know why that is, but you know, but trust me, I I don't have that with my company. I mean, if I have an issue with my dispatcher, me and him are talk it out, and if we happen to not see eye to eye, then we both could talk to the owner at the same time. You see what I'm saying? That's what I like about my company. The door is open to the safety director and the uh, the owner. So if I have any issues, I, I am able to hash it out that way. So I am real glad for this uh, female truck driver right here. I'm 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 glad for uh, Kevin to actually see and agree with this driver that she wasn't at fault, no preventables, no uh, anything. You know what I'm saying? All she does is recover trucks. She bring them back to wherever they need to be, take pictures. And now that she got the these head safety director personal phone number, she wouldn't have to go through any more issues. Shout out to Kevin. Drivers, what do you think? Let me know your let me know your thoughts in the comments below. Drop shit and still make it look good.